Yo, what's going on guys and welcome back to another video and as you guys can see from the title we are going to be talking about the end of the iPod Touch. I'm going to be honest with you guys, this video does make me really sad because the iPod Touch was literally the first ever Apple device that I owned and this little thing right here got me into the entire Apple ecosystem so there are a lot of good reasons as to why Apple will probably never make a refresh model of the iPod Touch and for those who don't know Apple actually still sells the iPod Touch like you can still go to the Apple store or you can go to apple.com and you can still buy an iPod Touch it is a little hidden on the Apple website but if you search it up on the top right it is there and it's pretty interesting that this 2019 iPod Touch is still being sold to this day but let's talk a little bit more about why this is happening and by the way this video is sponsored by AceFast but more on them later. Okay so first of all let's talk about the actual design of these iPod Touch devices and if you think about it Apple has really only gone through like two major design changes like the first four generations pretty much looked the same they all had this reflective back of course the fourth generation was a little bit thinner but you know still had this reflective back very easy to scratch but with the 2012 model so the ipod touch fifth generation it looked a little different it didn't have that reflective back it came in several different colors even had this little loop at the very bottom and of course it also had this little wi-fi antenna at the top right and Apple is still using this design to this day. This is like a 10 year old design. It's still being sold in stores. And if Apple were to realistically make a new refresh model of the iPod Touch, let's say the eighth generation, then it would probably need to be upgraded in terms of the design. And to be honest, I'm not sure if this is actually gonna happen just because I don't think Apple's gonna do that because it might be costly and the demand might just not be there anymore compared to how many people actually wanted to buy these devices, let's say like 10 years ago. So it's kind of sad to know that Apple probably will not be making a refresh model, um, but if a refresh model were to ever come out, it would probably need to look very different than what it looks like at the moment. Okay, so next let's talk about the actual use case of these iPods in 2022 because let's face it, if you were to buy a 7th generation iPod today, you might be tempted to just end up buying a cheaper iPhone, maybe the SE or maybe even like an iPad mini. And to be honest, there might be a better reason for you to buy those instead of the iPod just because the iPod is obviously a much smaller display and you're not gonna have the same performance that you have with the current existing Apple products. And so you're not getting the same performance for pretty much the price that you're paying. And so you kind of have a trade off here. Do you wanna spend the 200 bucks and get the iPod Touch 7th generation or would you rather spend a little bit more, maybe get a refurbished iPhone 11? And so there's a lot of different options that you know a consumer could choose from, but it just might not make the most sense to buy an iPod today, um, especially because these things were very useful for like streaming music, playing games, FaceTiming, using iMessage. And if you just spend a little bit of extra money, you might just be able to get caught up with the newest Apple chips and have pretty much better performance. And so it really does come down to the consumer, but if you guys just wanna buy one for nostalgia, I would say consider picking up an older iPod Touch, like the fourth generation or fifth generation that I have here, um, because these things are honestly so much fun to use. Like I use it to listen to music, play games and all that stuff. Okay, so the next thing I did wanna talk about are the actual costs associated with repairing these old iPod Touch devices. And to be honest, these things are super thin. They're very light and they have really small batteries. So of course, repairability is not always gonna be the simplest thing. And the battery, for example, is soldered onto the motherboard, I'm pretty sure. And so repairability was never really easy for these devices. And in the long run, you know, you may end up paying more just to repair an out of warranty iPod touch. And so it might just make more sense maybe to buy like an iPhone because repairability for that is a lot more simpler. And of course, I'm pretty sure Apple has like that self repair program now. So that's always nice to see, but Repairability on these things, definitely not gonna be that simple. But I will be honest though, even though this thing only lasts like two hours on battery, I still love using this little thing. Definitely a really nice device to have. And of course, this does lead us to the final question. Is the iPod Touch coming back? To be honest, probably not. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that Apple could be working on right now behind the scenes and I don't think the iPod Touch is one of them. Now, even though Apple still sells the iPod Touch, the seventh generation, it should still be supported for the next iOS version. So I'm pretty sure it will receive iOS 16, but I don't think it's gonna receive iOS 17. Um, but if the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus get iOS 17 in the future, then I'm pretty sure the iPod Touch seventh generation will get that as well. But I wouldn't get my hopes up too high because I'm pretty sure after one year, support for that thing is gonna be cut off forever. 
and I'm kind of tempted to buy an iPod Touch 7 generation. I know I told you guys to buy a fourth or fifth, but I kind of just want to buy one, maybe just keep it boxed up, never unbox it, but I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Should I buy one or not? Uh, maybe it would be cool for like a future video like 10 years later, but who knows? Let me know in the comment section below. And by the way, I did want to give a quick shout out to today's video sponsor, AceFast. They have this awesome charger known as the Smart PD Charger Hub. And this allows you to basically connect your MacBooks, a couple PCs like Huawei's, Lenovo's, Dell's, and even a couple Android phones as well as the Nintendo Switch. And you can basically charge and connect it to an external display at the same time using just one cable. It's super simple. It makes my desk seem so much more like less cluttered because everything is just done through one cable. It's super easy to use. Um, and they also have an additional USB port as well in case you want to charge an additional device. So I actually ended up just connecting my wireless charger and it's so convenient. If you guys are interested in checking it out, links will be in the description box below. And of course you guys can use my code. And if you guys are interested in winning one as well, you can follow their social medias. Everything will be in the description box below and be sure to comment down your Instagram handle. But anyways, thank you guys so much for checking out today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And just like that, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.